those. भाई पेमेंट रिवर्स था यूज़ खबर नहीं वीडियो बन तो तो हेलो हेलो
Good morning and warm and welcome to you all. I am Arvind Vishwakarma, host for today. We continue with our Sadgun Sang Meet 104th virtual webinar. Our topic for today is Medical Device <laughs> Rules India, shall be taken by Mr. Viral Se. He shall be covering what is medical device, class of device, essential principle checklist, QMS, Sugam portal. It shall follow question and answer session. Let's quickly go to agenda. Agenda for the Sadgun Sang Meet. Virtual inauguration by Dr. Sundar Kataria, invoking the blessings of deity, chanting of Gayatri Mantra, introduction of the speaker, Presentation by Mr. Viral Said, followed by question answer session and then closing session. Brief introduction of Dr. Sundar Kataria. Sadgun Sang conceived and led by Dr. Sundar Kataria, driven with a mission to elevate the quality, safety, and environmental awareness level of industries. Sadgun Sang is a series of educa educative, informative events aiming to emulate professionals and possible solutions to current issues of industry and economy. Designation and organization. He is the chairman and managing director of International Certification Services Private Limited. His academic qualification, doctorate in business management and mechanical engineering. Experience, Rajasthan Automat Automatic uh, Power Project. India's first nuclear power plant, RAPP at Ravad Bhata Kota, built by India, Indian engineers, worked as nuclear scientist for 11 years and successfully completed and commissioned the plant. Engineer India Limited, first batch of engineer to develop Bombay high offshore oil, oil and gas field, mega offshore complex platform, truck and submarine pipeline, underwater inspections and integration oil and gas equipment, etc. Dead Knox Viral's word. Worked for 17 years at various capacity for the certification of fixed offshore installation, submarine pipelines, onshore projects, and personal qualification. He is founder of Founder of India's first certification confirmance assessment body established in the year 1999. Provider of total quality solutions. Certification of management system, ISO inspection and testing and training qualification of persons. His Akada achievements awards received lifetime achievement award for the contribution for the correlation technologies for NACE International by NIGS under NACE USA. Social work, protection of life, assets, environmental and safety. I request Dr. Sundar Kataria to virtually inaugurate the session. Please join us for the recitation of Gayatri Mantra.
introduction of the keynote speaker. Uh, designation and organization. VRC medical device consultant. His academic qualification MSc in microbiology. Area of specialization and experience associated with SOLCO biomedical SMPL Angliplast Private Limited. Medivac Surgical AMS Claris Life Science. Gallons Water etc. He is a leader pioneer and a strategic with over 17 years of rich and insightful experience across device industries, including medical device and pharmaceutical awards and achievements, MDR and IVDR certified. Edumate registered in the EU to act as EU authorized representatives and in MHRA for UK responsible person. Please welcome Mr. Viral Said. Over to you, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, am I audible to all? Yes, sir. Yeah. Good morning to everybody. And first of all, thanks to the Mr. Om Prakash and Vinod Sarma, who connected me with the ICA certification body. I am also thankful to the Mr. Arvid for your introductions, Ms. Sundar Kataria and Sumit Kataria ji for providing this opportunity to expose my, uh, to providing a great platform and let us start without wasting time. I'm just sharing the, my screens of the medical device presentation that is. <coughs> let me share the screen. In India, medical device is controlled by central drugs and control standard organizations along with the rules and regulations defined by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. All the information of the medical device is available at the CDSEO website. You may refer cdseo.nic.gov.in. So all over the contents that I bring here and whatever I get going to deliver you and wait share you that is available on the CDSEO website. Again, it is says it is controlled by CDSEO that is located in Delhi. The Center for Drugs and Control Standard Organization controls the medical device along with the pharmaceutical drugs and allopathics and biological vaccines too. So medical device rules become control in India since 2017 and become effective into 1st January of 2018. Before that, our medical device is the part of the Drugs and Cosmetic Act. After 2018, it is become mandatory to follow the medical device rules. <coughs> so in today's sessions, we will discuss the what are the medical device, which means those who wants to sell or distribute their products within the India should understand the definition of the medical device. It is again classified in different categories. So rules and regulations is applicable as per the different class of the device. According to the class of the device, the manufacturer or importer or, or other agent, those who wants to sell or manufacture device should pay the fees and select the appropriate form as per the rules. To manufacture a medical device, it must comply to the some standard safety and performance required that is covered in the essential principle checklist. If you are a manufacturer or importer, your system must meet the some quality management system uh, requirement that is specified in schedule five of the medical device rules. That is almost similar to the ISO 1345. That is ISO 1345 is the quality management system requirement for the medical device manufacturer. 
the next point is site master file the site master file is the typical requirement of the indian medical device rules so all the manufacturer must prepare the site master file along with the qms requirement once you complete the essential principle checklist you should aware the what are the part of your device master file so whatever the conformity that we made and we confirm that my product meets this type of uh, performance and safety requirement you should give the summary in device master file the content of the site master files and device master file is available in medical device rules so all are suggested to prepare document in that way all this communication relating to the application of the manufacturing license and application and licensing activity is being controlled by through sugam portal it's a online submission system it's a good system that is developed by cdsu so we should all the manufacturer must upload their document and communicate with the uh, cdsu through sugam portal <clears throat> so before discussing let us understand the medical device rules of india how it is so medical device is made up of the different chapters and schedules this is schedules and chapters so chapter 1 is for the basics that cover the scope of the medical device it defines the what is medical device and definitions and how it is applicable to the different scope means the notified bodies and uh, laboratory testing bodies manufacturers and importers then after chapter 2 is for the grouping essential principles and standards chapter 3 for the authorities that is being powered by the ministry of health to the inspectors chapter 4 is applicable to the medical device sales and distributions chapter 4 is uh, means chapter 4 for the manufacturer those who wants to manufacture in india whereas chapter 5 you can see for the import of it is not necessary and yeah, you all for every times you manufacture some of the manufacturer uh, persons who wish to import the medical device from the other countries so the rules define is for the import of the medical device in chapter 5 So either you are a importer or manufacturer you must follow the labeling requirement that is defined in chapter 6 clinical investigation clinical part means if it, whenever we are either importing or manufacturing any medical device it should be either approved by the cdsu the approved by cdsu definition means the it is known as the predicate device predicate means the it is already the safety and performance requirement of the device are already assessed by our uh, ministry or cdsu and there isn't any question of this so once you manufacture the similar device so the clinical investigation is not required in some of the cases clinical investigation is required when you are claiming that your device is somewhat different to the already approved uh, device and the indication of use of the device is somewhat different and you are claiming a new device or if you are manufacturing or either importing a new device in those cases clinical investigation is required in some of the cases proactively some of the manufacturers are also applying for the clinical investigations to reduce the risk of their those device and to understand the clinical significance of their product <coughs> and for that you can see the chapter 8 that is import of the manufacturers of medical device which does not have predicate device means there are some device which is not approved by cdsu predicate not predicate means it is there isn't any device in india that is being approved by cdsu in those cases those who wants to market this type of device they should follow chapter 8, 8. then chapter 9 is again administrative provision for the notified body and fd inspectors like that <coughs> chapter x is for the registration of for the laboratory laboratory means the medical device testing laboratory before 2018s the uh, these laboratories are being controlled by the cdsu as a pharma under pharmaceuticals now the under medical device rules there is a separate license is being given to the laboratories and they should certified for under those these rules and chapter 9 is applicable 
for the sale of the medical device. Here I had mentioned in you know, you can see the bracket rules one, two, three. So there is a one well, medical device rules is available at the CDSU the, under chapter one. Rules one, two, three is applicable for the chapter two, rules four to seven is applicable. So you can see from this. So medical device rules is made up of the almost 12 chapters and seven schedules. Under every schedule, there are different appendix, one, two, three, something like that. So for every schedule, you should follow the, the, the schedule. Appendix is for the preparation. It is one type of template that is being available to the everybody. So you can prepare documents in that way. So first of all, we should understand the, which schedule is applicable to us, which uh, chapter is applicable to us, being on the application. If you are manufacturer, you should follow those rules. So schedule one is for the parameter of classifications. So me medical device in India is classified in the uh, class A, B, C, and D. Class A is the lowest risk device and class D is the highest risk. Device. And there are also some mechanism or principle that defines the class of the device. Somehow in India, all the medical device are ready-made available on the Sugam, uh, CDSO website, which defines the intended use, name of the device and classifications. Still, if you, if you think your device is not there, you can go through these uh, principles and mechanism to classify your device. Schedule 2 defines the fees payable, depending on the rules applicable and depending on the class of, of the device. So when you submit the device, we must pay the fees according to the schedule 2. Schedule, uh, schedule 3 is for the registration of the notified bodies. <laughs> notified bodies are the same like the ICS is also one of the notified body that is being approved by the CDSEO. So CDSEO nowadays uh, they had started controlling the notified bodies. Uh, there is almost I think eight to nine notified body. ICS is one of them. So once we uh, apply or put uh, submit the documents, if your device falls under class A and B, the notified bodies are supposed to do inspection of the your premises. And they should submit the reports to the CDSU and CDSU then after grant the license. So notified body is nowadays become the vital role and that is connecting, connecting uh, that becomes the bridge between the manufacturer and CDSU. Schedule is for the device master file. So for the anybody who wants to seek the manufacturing license from CDSEO, they must prepare the device master file as per the content given in schedule four. Schedule five defines the quality management system requirements. It is similar to the ISO 13485. <laughs> schedule 6 is for the post approval changes so that is the, the schedule 6 is applicable to the everybody those who are already licensed post approval changes means when you are making some changes to the approved device it is again classified in the major changes that is changes in respect to the then major changes and minor changes so all the changes that is being made after license must be notified to the CDSU through the Sugam portals and they are now allowing your changes approval. And schedule seven is applicable for the requirements for the permission to import or manufacture investigational medical device for the clinical. Means if when you are importing any device that doesn't have any predicate device in India, and suppose we are manufacturing the device, we want to manufacture in India and we don't have any device. So in those cases, if it falls under the clinical investigation requirement, we should follow schedule seven requirement. So let us start with the, what is medical device? So this is the lithography of the medical device definitions. <clears throat> All devices, including instrument, apparatus, appliances, implant, material, or other article, whether used alone or in combination, including a software of the accessory intended by its manufacturer to be used specifically, specifically for the human be beings or 
animals which does not achieve the primary intended action in or human body or animal by any pharmacological or immunological or metabolic means but which may assist in its intended function by such means for one or more of the specific purpose that is listed like diagnosis, prevention, monitoring, treatment, elevation of the any disease or disorder, diagnosis, monitoring, treatment, elevation or assistance for any injury or disability, investigations, replacement or modifications or support of the anatomy of the physiological process, supporting or sustaining of the life, Disinfection of the medical device, control of the conceptions. Looking to this definition, I understand when you go to the hospitals and when you exclude the medicinal drugs, all the items or utilities or other accessories that is available on the healthcare sector almost covers under the medical device. Before 2018, there is a list of the uh, CDSO used to provide a list of the notified medical device. That is the almost 17 to 18. After making some rules, they had added few devices and nowadays they are control almost 2,500 types of devices that is being controlled and uh, considered as a medical device. So there is a use scope of medical device in India and it is being controlled by CDSO. You can see the class of the device. So either it's a medical device or in vitro medical device. In vitro medical device means pathology, pathology relating to the diagnostic purpose. <coughs> Both the devices are classified in four categories. That is class A, B, C, or D. You can see the class A is the lowest risk and class B is the moderate risk. Class D defines the highest risk. I can say the class A, the, for example, the urine catheters uh, or urine bags. Class B is the infusion set. Class C is for the orthopedic implants and class D may be uh, some heart valves. And so you can see then uh, the integrity or that the medical device that comes in contact with the patient, the risk is going to there. Uh, when we say class e, A, the risk to the patient that is being made by the device may be very low and it may not affect the you know, patient health. When as we say high risk, the, the class when you say class C and class D, the performance of the device may affect the patient health. Hence, the stringent controls are requirements and also the rules and schedules are made in those ways that uh, indirectly secures the patient health. Different types of fees is applicable and being, you know, so first of all, we should understand the, you know, as per the, your roles, being you are a notified body or laboratory and other, you are applying for the manufacturing license, yeah, import license, and depending on the class. These are the fee structure that is being defined by the CDSU. So when we applied to the Sugam portals, we, uh, we should know, they are not uh, saying us, okay, you pay this type of fees. As per your applications, you have to understand your fee structure that is defined by CDS and you should prove, you, we should pay those fees to the CDS loan. For class, again, in India, the, depending on the class, even four classes are there. Class A and B is controlled by the state level authorities and class C and D is controlled by the central level authorities. So when you, we goes for the peace payment, the C and D payment is available to pay online through Sugam portal. And when you falls under the class A and B, we must go for the state level controls. And it is again going to be deeper. In Gujarat, there is a different systems. In Tamil Nadu, there is a different systems in Maharashtra. So every state has some different mechanisms for class A and B peace payment collections. So I'm talking about the different forms that is being selected. You can see the applications and license. So as a notified body, if he wants to get a certified through CDSU, you must apply the form MD1. Once you approve, the CDSO will issue a license in form MD2. 
if you are a testing laboratory, you should apply it in the form MD39. So likewise, you can see there are different mechanisms and different forms. That is one for the applications and second for the license. So there, uh, that is the good advantage of the online systems. When you have select the, once you understand the which form is applicable to you, and uh, once you select, they will definitely, the software will ask you that these are the minimum documentation requirement being uploaded by as per the form requirement. So it is critical to understand the which form is applicable when you are seeking any license from the CDSU. You can also see different uh, class if device falls under class A and B for manufacturing, class A and B for lawn. Lawn like manufacturing and lawn means the difference is that as a manufacturer, you are the original manufacturer. When I say lawn license, means you are not the original manufacturer, but you are manufacturing your products from someone else who is already certified. It is known as the lawn license. So if you want to manufacture one device as a manufacturer, you should apply as MD3. If you want to manufacture same product from someone else who is already certified, then in that case, you are the legal manufacturer, whereas the original manufacturer is somewhat different. It is known as the loan license. It is also so for class A and B manufacturer, we should apply it under MD3 for loan license, MD4. In same case, class C and D, it is MD7 and 8. <coughs> so these are the different forms that is available. And I think there are three forms is still missing here. It is in last month, it is updated. That is medical device, sales and wholesale license. It is again being separated from the Drug and Cosmetic Act. Now CDSCO is allowing the wholesale license under Sugam portals. Those who wants to get the wholesale license, wholesale license means you are not manufacturer or importer. You are only doing the trading. In those who wants to just do a business like trading, they should apply under form 41 and they should get the license in 43 if they are meeting the requirement. So when we say you had identified the specific form that is applicable to your product, so you should understand the what are the minimum documentation required and that is being identified through the essential principle checklist. Here I am going to share the MSL. So now I had said the essential principle checklist that is being notified by the CDSU. So what is checklist and checklist means they ask the different questions to you and we should understand maybe how it affects to the our product. So we must have some conformity against the, their requirement. So when you go to the uh, different questions that is being prepared. So we, here we can understand once uh, you have to identify whether this 4.1 rule is applicable to my product or not. Yes, when you say yes, it is applicable. How will you comply? Then we will say yes, I will follow these standards. So you have to make provision in your documentation. My device is being confirmed by these standards and these are the minimum requirements and I had issues. So they had prepared a separate different questions that and so we should answer all these questions to identify the what product standard is applicable to my device and how I am going to control. So here let us and take a only single example and move further. The clause 4.1 say medical device should be designed and manufactured in such a way that when used under the conditions and 
for the purpose intended and were applicable by the virtue of the technical knowledge, experience, education, or training, and the medical and physical conditions of the intended users. They will perform as intended by the manufacturer and not compromise the clinical conditions of the safety of patients or safety of the health of users or where applicable other persons provided that any risk which may be associated with their device use constitute acceptable risk when weight against the benefits of the patients and are compatible with the high level of protections of health and safety. Now they want the some surety from the medical device manufacturer or importer. Okay, at least you should ensure the patient safety when you put that is available to the market. So here we have to confirm there is a uh, there is a specific standard for that to ensure the, that is the risk analysis. The risk analysis of the device is being conducted to understand the what are the minimum risk associated with our device. So, for to conduct the risk analysis, we should follow ISO 14971. Similar way, so it is not possible to conduct and discuss in uh, subtopics, but I am just going to the brief out. The, these are the mechanisms and to identify the minimum product performance requirement by understanding the different questions being asked under the essential principle. Whether you go for the C mark and other standards, whatever. So, essential principle is the minimum and uh, major uh, document of the any device. Once you complete this document, and so you should understand the how my device is being performed and what are the standards requirement. So it depends on the nature of the device and whether a device has any biological contents, whether your device is sterile. So depending on the nature of your device, we should understand the what are the requirements of my device. Once we identify those, we should go for the preparation of the medical device. Let me share the another screen. So there is almost 45 to 49 questions being asked under essential principle checklist. So here you should identify the applicable to the device. When you say yes, we have to mention the method of conformity and identify application of the specific documents. Means we have to narrate the given, give the description of the document number with revision number and a proper name. So whenever the, any auditor comes, they should understand and they can you can directly provide those documents. Let us move forward. That is the QMS quality management system requirement under the MDR India. It is almost similar to the ISO 13485 and again as per the schedule 5 of the MDR. So when we applied on the Sugam portals, you you can see this is the exact similar copy of that I had and copied from the Sugam portals. So they will ask you in part one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten types. So they will ask you these documents from the QMS to be uploaded on the Sugam portal. Part one is for the quality management systems. As per the PIP schedule here, we should give the brief description of the overall entire quality management systems being followed under uh, your premises or under company. Part two for the quality manuals. Part three for the quality policy. Procedure of the part four is for the control of the documents, control of the records, management responsibility, internal audit system, corrective and preventive actions, training need identification means training procedures. And part 10 is somewhat different than the ISO 13485 requirement. That is happened, it is uh, mentioned in the Annex A of the fifth schedule of the medical device rules. So as a manufacturer, when you may going to manufacture your device, so your software should have some environmental requirements. So it is defined in an X-ray, so suppose you are manufacturing a orthopedic implants, so they will say okay, you should have this type of uh, clean rooms. 
clean room since it is that is free from the different uh, not microorganism but it should have some temperature and humidity controls over that along with the, some specific air changes. So the, our soft load should be designed in that way. That means the environment requirement and it is defined in the IESO 14644 part one. So it is again classified in class five, six, seven, eight, nine. So our medical device says the, these are the minimum requirement against the your device. So we understand the what are the minimum documents being required by the CDSU during documentations and uploading. Again, the site master files, the specific templates is available under the MDR. But during applications, the Sugam portal asks these five requirements and these five documents to be uploaded by the manufacturer. So first one is the plant layout of the premises with indication of scales where we must identify the every area with numbering systems with dimensions or, and whenever require the environment condition that we discuss in QMS. So you should identify the environment requirement in the layout premises. We must have organization charts and there is defined responsibilities of that those key personals. The list of equipments and instrument when they are asking the this list of instrument and equipment means whenever they comes for the audit they have list of their equipment so our equipment must be qualified our you know, qualifications experience and respond technical person means your teams should be trained proper properly they are also asking for the contract activities means if you are outsourcing any activities that may affect the product performance. So we should give narration here. <coughs> These are the minimum requirement of the device master file being asked by the CDSU. It is again divided in the different parts and closes. We can see the executive summary device description and product specifications including variants and accessories descriptive information of the device product specification reference to predicate means you should identify the any device that is being approved by the cdsu and we should make comparison to our device to the previously approved device from the cdsu in terms of the technology mechanism make an indication for use so we can claim the yes my my device is almost substantial equivalence to the cd already previously clear device labeling details so when they ask for the labeling de details we must follow the rules that we discussed earlier and then at the beginning of the the slides so there is a specific chapters and rules and applied for the labeling so it does not mean that and we directly provide the details. Re labeling details means whenever you are going to provide a labeling information of your device, you must follow the minimum requirement that is required under the rules. And you should prepare label in those ways. And then after you furnish your label here. Part four is for the device design and manufacturing information. So we should provide the specific designs design in terms considering from the manufacturing productions sales logistic everything and that covers under the device lifestyle life of the device we already discussed about the essential principle checklist part six is for the risk analysis and control summary part seven is the verification and validation of the main part seven is for the verification means those you had defined okay, my device apply to this type of rules that you are confirming under the essential principle then after in part seven you should justify okay, how your device meets and what are the verifications and validations being done so part seven is you can see the different 
10 sections under the part C1, that is design verification and validations. Biocompatibility. The biocompatibility, it's a minimum requirement of the every device, depending on the duration of the contact with the patients of your device. So, first of all, when we are claiming the biocompatibility validation data means we should identify the what types of biocompatibility tests are applicable to my device. There is almost 11 to 12 types of biocompatibility tests being done on the in vivo or vitro means on laboratory or in with animals. So for that, we should follow the ISO 10993 part one standards where we need to identify the minimum test required to comply depending on the class of the device and how it interact, how it comes in contact with the so there is a specific table given in the those standards. When we go, uh, we refer uh, the standards. We should understand. And again, biocompatibility test uh, it is required to be conducted outside. Then the laboratory should be qualified under the medical device testing laboratory requirement and good laboratory practice. So we should ensure these type of requirements under biocompatibility validation data. Medicinal substance data. Medical medicinal substance data means if your device have some drugs along with it, so means combination of device. <coughs> For example, some of these sutures comes in market with these some drugs. And some syringes are being sold with the pre-filled drugs. So these are the medicinal substance that is also available along with the medical device. Some drugs are also and uh, comes. So you should provide this type of medical device information here. Biological safety against how it's biological safety. If when you are using the medicinal substance, we should prove the biological safety as per the uh, drug rules. If your device sterilization, sterilization means the making the device free from the any microorganism. So then some of the device are required sterile when it comes uh, not some every device requires sterile when it comes uh, when being implanted if manufacturer is not uh, doing the sterilizations the healthcare industry or end users are required to sterilize those device when it comes in contact with the cardiovascular system pneumatic uh, uh, CNS systems uh, so this device are required to be sterile sterile means uh, let us make our device free from it. So there are, there are different methods being followed by the manufacturers to make the sterilizations. And you should validate that, uh, yes, uh, the proper sterilization activities are done. If your device have some softwares, then software validation is also required. Animal studies data and stability validation data. Stability, when you are claiming the cell type of your device, then stability validation so means up to the expiry of the product, your product must perform the safety claimed uh, performance requirement, clinical evidence and post-marketing uh, surveillance means, means when you market your products, then you must have some mechanism to collect the data, to collect the customer complaint and when they complain how you, if some problems are there, how you recall your products. So you must have some uh, requirement uh, that is implemented under your quality management systems. They will also ask for the three quality and a batch release certificate of your product. And part nine is just given where the additional info uploaded. <coughs> So once you have understood, so doing the getting the all this information or manufacturing license. So first of all, you should go to the Sugam Medical Device Portals. You should get the login and let it get approved from the Sugam Portal uh, authorities. So once you apply document, they will acknowledge your emails and ask you to send the original uh, doc documents that is being uploaded for the login applications. Then manufacturers need to send those documents to the CDSU Delhi. After verifying your documents, they will assign a login passwords. And after then, you can do all the activities under the Sugam portals. So generally, the Sugam the applications uh, when you apply to 
they will ask for the type different types of application as we discussed under the different types of form selections and your roles. So depending on your forms, when you select those forms, they will proactively provide all the information being furnished by you. So the overall Sugam portal, the mechanism of the Sugam portal application is to get the Sugam portal login, identify the selective form, upload the documents. After completion of the documents, they will ask you to pay the fees. So you should pay the evidence of the fees. Then after it generates the legal form. Legal form means the a license that being provided by the CDHO. So you are assuring that the, all the informations that you have furnished in the application should be given say in same way. So ensure the any typo errors and other mistakes and to avoid those. So that is legal form being signed digitally by the owner of the manufacturers. And once you submit that legal form, it goes to the under process uh, at the CDSU. Generally, FDA takes the 45 days to review the your data. If your device falls under the class A and B, they assign our applications to the authorized notified body. If your device falls in class C and D, they within 45 days they inform the original manufacturer to give a, for about the conducting the notif uh, inspection requirement. So either notified body or FDA inspector comes to our premises for the inspections of the premises and verification of the data that is being uploaded on the portals. And they will provide a one report or non-conform, may also provide some type of non-conformity. It is also again a, on, on the SUGAM online portals. So we should comply to the all the non-conformities either raised by the notified body or FDA inspectors. And after satisfactory review from the FDA inspectors, they assign the license and that is being reflected on your portals. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And over to you, Mr. Arvind. Thank you, sir, for the present uh, for the uh, for the presentation and explaining the topic in simplifying way. Now I request all delegates to put your questions in the chat box, which shall be taken up during the session. Hello. Arvind, are you getting me? Yes, sir. Okay. Any question is there or I can? There. Uh, yes, sir. One question is there. I can talk? Yes, sir. You can talk, sir. Okay. Yeah, very good afternoon. Rather, good morning, Mr. Uh, sir, uh, we are unable to hear you, Sundar, sir.
Hello, how are you? Uh, sir, your voice is breaking. I think there is no voice or some disturbance. Uh, let it be to given to some other. By that time, he corrects his uh, PDF. I mean, audio system. Okay, sir. So we have one question in the chat box. What are the compliance to be done after obtaining registration? So registration in terms of obtaining uh, means I understand the. The registration is required nowadays allowed for the class A non-sterile, non-miserable device and class C and D. <clears throat> so all the device, it does not mean that when you, uh, when you go for the registrations, it is all, uh, very simple as compared to the getting the manufacturing license from this. So uh, for registrations, we are just furnishing the make of the device, intended use and labeling and sterile status. But it does not mean that uh, we should not follow the requirement of the that is specified under the CDSU. So all the rules under medical device and all the requirements that is defined in medical device rules, whether you are doing the, the registrations of your device, we must have documentations as per the medical device rules means we must have site master file, quality management systems and the device master files. Generally, we are understanding that they by just providing the information at the portals, the responsibility of the manufacturer is get finished. But you must have all the requirements that is specified under medical device rules. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have one more question from Prakash ji. What is present status of conformance to ASTM in medical device rule 2017? For medical device rules, the India says you must follow the Indian specification standards, first of all. For making your device the, to identify the conformity of the our device, we must follow the Indian specification requirement. When you are following other standards, if other standards are some standards are not available in Indian specifications, then we should go for the other international standards and ESTM standards that is eligible. But to make the conformity of device in India, in a specification is desired. If it may happen, then uh, when the as a manufacturer, we should identify, we should do the harmonizations of the requirement. And when whichever is the very stringent, you should understand uh, define those limit to comply the device uh, performance. Yes, sir. We have one Excuse more question. Me. Excuse me. Okay. What I understand recently, there was some meeting and discussion in a CDSO in which it was also considered that conformance to ASTM standards should be also allowed. And that is already under the draft stage, as I know. And uh, whether it has been finalized, maybe in a day or two, it may get finalized or maybe it may take one, uh, one month or one week or so. But ASTM standards are also considered nowadays. Uh, this is... Uh, I know very well. Mm -hmm. As far as, of course, India media, uh, this medical device rules, uh, mm -hmm. earlier the policy was that it should conform to Indian standard number one. If Indian standards are not there, then only ISO IC. And if uh, ISO IC is also not existing, then manufacturers validated the uh, specifications. But now mm -hmm. recently, in the about uh, 15, 20 days back or so, there was consideration that ASTM standards should also be considered. And uh, that draft is already on the... This is already under a draft stage for mm. discussion and finalization. And I'm sure that maybe in a few days or so, maybe one week or so, it will get finalized as a HTM standards also. So that is the latest development which has taken place in uh, this medical device rules. Yeah, but when, when inner standards are not available and following the other standards is good for the and making the conformity of our device. So even it is already specified in, in MDR, if nothing is available in India, then you should follow the other standards. Following something and following nothing is better than following something. That is good. And we should define this in the essential principle checklist. 
and yeah, it's a good i'm going to say hd standards are now given also given the importance uh, oh. if any standards are not there yes yeah 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 sure thank you thank you, thank you sir for providing your insight Yes, sir. We have two more questions. One from Ramesh ji and one from Elango. The first one is RTF prefill string glass under which classification? Sincerely saying, I I cannot say and define the class of the device without identifying the other documents. So I am passing this question. Okay, sir. We have another question from Elango. What should be the minimum experience required for ISO one three four eight five auditor? Under MDR, nothing is specified relating to the becoming a auditor under ISO one three four eight five. So it is the call of the notified body, and it is their requirement. So they should define the requirement of the auditor. Even there is a one rumors that is going under our industry, and people start doing the lead auditor courses. Just by doing the lead auditor courses, and they are saying that I am the I became the lead auditor. It is the, it is does not like that. So once you do the lead auditor course, means your idea of the auditing and you are taken to, uh, training. Again, that is required to be registered with the other and under the any notified body, you can only certified as a lead auditor. Otherwise, you should have to do the what one of, there is one agency IRCA yes. You should register yourself as a under IRCA if you want to claim yourself a lead auditor. So doing a class of the lead auditor course is the minimum requirement that is the training. And after that, you should register yourself under the IRCA to become the lead auditor. That is again going to be periodical renewal. Uh, Mr. Virala, I would like to say that even after doing lead auditor course, mm -hmm. he should have the minimum 20 audits as a auditor in training yes after that only he can claim as an auditor and lead yes, auditor sir. of course after that team leader then only lead auditor yes sir i understand it is written already written under the irca yes that is minimum but what sir what is happening in industry sir but just by doing the lead auditors course people are understanding that i am the lead auditors no and no, no. It is not. usually says on the social platforms and please don't get misguided yeah yeah very right uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for explaining the questions in a beautiful way. And I think the, there, there is one guy who seeks these presentations. And so I, I noted their emails and I will definitely share my presentations to him. Uh, thank you, sir, for explaining the questions. Uh, we'll wait for two minutes, sir. So we have one more question. Uh, what is the requirement for non-sterilized, non-measuring class A? For that, the manufacturer should do registrations under the Sugam portals. First of all, you should open your Sugam account under the uh, Sugam portals. Once you get approval from the Central Delhi, you should update the addition uh, they should allow the addition of the those device informations and they should ask for the, some undertakings that you are complying to the requirements of the QMS, your device classification is done properly and uh, you, you had implemented QMS systems under your companies and you should follow all the requirements of the medical device. These four types of under undertakings are being asked under the CDSU. Thank you, sir. We have one Providing more uh, uh, providing undertaking means you have implemented all the requirements. Uh, thank you, sir. We have one more question. Uh, can an importer obtain registration for imported medical device or equipment without wholesale drug license? 
and an importer obtain registration for the imported medical device or equipment without wholesale license. Yes, you as an importer, you can import without wholesale license. Okay. Yes, sir, one more question. Uh, can you explain as the importance of loan license again? Law, law license is manufacturing as a third party. Suppose I am a original manufacturer of the X, X or Y medical device and uh, you want, you do not want to manufacture at your premises and you just have uh, con uh, good controls on the marketing. So you just want, ask me to provide a loan of the, my license. So you, you can apply it under your Sugam portals by stratifying that uh, I am I will manufacture my device under the already approved uh, CDSU approved premises. So you are taking loan of the uh, license from the CDSU. And so CDSU may understand that yes, you are, you are, though you are not manufacturer, but you are manufacturing your brand or product from the another uh, license manufacturing company. So as a loan license manufacturer, all the legal well, the formalities, it is, it is your role. But you should ensure that whatever the products being manufactured from the original manufacturer are under approval from the CDSU. So there is a less investment in the loan license as compared to the original manufacturer. Thank you, sir. Can I ask one question? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mr. Viral said, yes, very sir. nice uh, you have presented a very detailed, mm -hmm. uh, vertically, completely, and horizontally, giving all, all the requirement. And uh, I also want three for it. I am uh, uh, pleased to see that a uh, lot of uh, consultants have come in this uh, mm -hmm. uh, means uh, platform and try to educate people. Because mm -hmm. so far in India, that was the unorganized sector, and now it is getting organized. That is a very positive uh, note, I think. Uh, and uh, thank you, you have mm -hmm. gone very detailed and mm -hmm. especially you have touched upon the legal and regulatory requirement, wh right. what license required by FDA and uh, where you have to get your product approval and all these things. But uh, I'm a little confused. Mm -hmm. I also do, I have also qualified auditor. I do mm -hmm. review most of the document for issue of the certificate. But mm. then I come across two warning issue. Mm. One is uh, about uh, design. Mm. People always shortcut saying that mm. client has provided us design. Mm. Now there is a lot of confusion which I don't accept in um, <laughs> principle. <laughs> mm -hmm. And second thing, when it comes to product <clears throat> holder, which is again requirement of ISO 13485. So people don't provide the product folder. So can you put little light on these two aspects? Uh, I understand your design and development. Second one is product folder, sir. Yeah, yeah, product folder. Because as per ISO 13485, people, mm -hmm. uh, that manufacturer or supplier has to have the product folder, the technical specification, quality control, quality insurance, whatever things are required as per the standard, they have to have that product folder. Mm. Uh, actually, for the product folders, I still not understand your concerns, but in ISO 13485, there are specific requirements is given to prepare a device master file of your products. Uh, it, it is known as a medical device file that is being specified under the ISO 13485 and uh, as per the Indian MDR 2017, the specific templates are there to prepare the device master files. Once you prepare the device master files under the MDR and almost is covered, so there isn't any product folder required and this is first time that I hear the word that is product folder. I will again check something is there but up to by based knowledge i understand and uh, medical device files uh, what is specified in the iso 13485 
and device master file is required under MDR. Looking to your second concern of the design and developments. So design and development means generally people are understanding the specific design in terms of the, you know, that is uh, Creo softwares and other AutoCAD softwares. So people, when what is fine as a design, means they are understanding the designs. Design in terms of the um, complying, that is we had identified the product conformity requirement and what standards apply to my products. So uh, it is again divided in the 10 detailed chapters that it, it starts from the design inputs to design outputs. Design inputs means the, those that is identified from the essential principle checklist. When I say okay, my product is sterile, so I should follow the sterilization requirement. Again, it is as per the, whether it is ETO sterile, gamma sterile, or autoclave or other mechanism of the sterilization. So, so there is a specific standards are there. When you identify the biological requirements of your product, you have biocompatibility requirements of product. So every requirement have some specific standards that is required to be complied by the every manufacturers. So design and development is again classified as a design input. So you, we should identify the minimum conformity requirement of the product along with the regulatory requirement of the product. We should also identify the patient need, how the my device is, comes in contact with the patients and end user needs. Some of the device, you know, like uh, ventilators and other device also require some usability engineer, engineering. Usability engineering means that when we uh, use it uh, at the clinical levels and so there are some chances of errors are also there. So how the human factors may affect the product performance is also required to understand. So it starts from the design input. And after thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, you have put... Uh, 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 the product uh, folder that I was talking with the master product file, which is required. Uh, you also confirm that one. That is good. Another thing you uh, also emphasize on the design. That is also has to be complied with. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Second thing, now people get away that uh, client requirement. Now client requirement is okay. Client will require what he needs, but what specification, what product, people don't specify applicable standard. Mm -hmm. If there's no national standard, at least international standards should be followed or international association guidelines are there that should be followed. For example, if you see dent dental uh, product which are used, mm -hmm. orthosis and uh, this, uh, aligners and other thing. So people don't specify at least the guidelines where, how you are manufacturing without guidelines, without a standard. Yeah, sir, I think that is the key point. And before starting any manufacturing or before designing the any product, then you must understand the minimum statutory requirements, legal requirements and applicable standards of your product. If he wants to identify those products and it requires the thorough knowledge of the entire process. And if you don't have those, then you should either outsource and you may also use the internet services. And there is a list of the uh, Indian standards are available on the so, uh, public domains. So we can, and you uh, have to go, you may also go through those resources to identify the which standard is applicable to me. There are There is a good uh, filter mechanisms so depending on the applications of your product, we may understand the which are the minimum standards required to my product. Just I would like to inform the you know, gathering. Uh, I am Prakash Bachani. I was scientist F and head of medical equipment planning department in BIS only, Bureau of Indian Standards. And BIS so far almost 1,500 Indian standards have been made and more than many standards are harmonized with the international ISO as well as IEC. Uh, Bureau of Indian had the full right that they can assess ISO standards and uh, they can harmonize it even with the changes with respect to the safety and with respect to the atmospheric condition. So that changes also we can make. Uh, we mean the BS can make and uh, they can uh, make their own Indian standard IS oblique ISO or IS oblique IC. 
there's a right with available with bis and so far about 1500 standards have already been made in various uh, 22 sectional committees so those standards can be adopted <coughs> so if still any iso is left um, anyone can make a request to bis so that can be adopted and a standard can be made as is standard also thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you for the vital information but uh, somehow people are not aware of these standards availability of the standards sir sir they has to give them the identify you know, they have to search on the so, uh, yes i would like to inform i would like to inform yes sir rightly said by dr sundar that is still many, many people are uh, still lack of knowledge that Indian standards are existing or not. Even, uh, let me tell you, when I was the head uh, in 2016 onwards. 16. Uh, yeah, because 2016 getting onwards, license is the one part of it. Very uh, smallest part of it. There are a yeah, lot yeah. of requirement, identification, marking, sterilization, a lot of things which goes in that one. Very true, sir. But they don't specify MDR. So why MDR is the basic thing you have to specify. Very true, the, you have the classification, everything is given there. So uh, our auditors, as well as the manufacturers or consultant had to really educate the market, educate the manufacturer. So that's sir. what I, I would like to emphasize. <laughs> Very true, sir. Actually, after joining this department, uh, I myself took the initiative to visit so many uh, stakeholders, manufacturers, users, as well as uh, laboratories to educate that Indian standards are there. I attend many conference seminars, myself as well as my team also. And we are try still trying to educate more and more people that Indian standards are already available and this can be followed. So Bureau of Indian Standards being the national standard body, so they must go for this national Indian standards which are formulated by BS. Of course, still I know that they are through conferences, through seminar, or through one-to-one -one dialogue. More and more education is still required. But still, I understand, of course, uh, there are only four to five percent manufacturers men in 2016. And now I understand more than 35 to 40 percent manufacturers are already there in India who are manufacturing medical devices which are confirmed to Indian standards. Thank you very much, sir. Secondly, I had also observed one point and, and people are directly following the ISO standards, though they want to sell their device in India only. So following the Indian standard is more than sufficient. And again, the Indian standards are available at the cheapest rates as compared to the ISO. So when the options is available, when uh, on the BIS portal that the IES oblique IESO, if this type of documents ever always procure this type of uh, documents, uh, that will also reduce the cost of your purchasing. Very true, very true. Okay. So these all Indian standard list is given on our website, yes. uh, www.bis.gov.in. If anybody want to assess these Indian standards, yes, going to the medical equipment hospital planning department, these standards can be assessed. And of course, persons are only available at all the times. And uh, even standards can be purchased online. No need to go to the individual office to purchase the Indian standards. Uh, mm -hmm. If it is our ISO, IS oblique ISO. But as far as Indian standards are concerned, IS, they are free of cost and can be downloaded from the portal itself, from the bh.jov.in itself. So these are free of cost. But IS oblique ISO and IS oblique IC, they are mm -hmm. uh, having the very marginal cost as compared to ISO or IC specification if one want to purchase. This for the information. Thank you very much. The Mr. Prakashi, I also want to have some one questions. Yes. Yes. Yeah, please, please, please. Yes. Yeah, Prakashi, there is also one domain and a website that is available on this uh, public domain that is low resource dot organizations and uh, where we people may assess the all the standards in free. So it is the same to the, that is controlled by the Bureau of Indian Standards? No, no, no. Yeah, that is no low resource standards are maybe different. I don't know. But as far as BIS standards are concerned, their website bis.gov.in, from there only Indian standards can be uh, downloaded and can be purchased as for the requirement. Okay. Because yes. there is a one website is available on the uh, Google's and uh, that is lowresource.org where all the bifurcations of the standards are done as per the category of the devices and they are uh, providing the pre assess but That's, almost uh, that uh, is the writing not uh, legal yeah it is not legal yes yeah 
Thank you. But at least people may have some understanding and what are the minimum requirements by at least though you are following and understood the yeah, yeah. older version also. That's you true. Should... Thank you. So if any query further is there, I am already always available uh, at my number, mobile number or as, as for email also. And uh, Mr. Uh, this, your, uh, your um, uh, IS, I'm also the registered auditor for uh, ISC. Their international certification services. I am already the auditor as a principal scientific auditor of ISC, and I am registered with them. But any information, I am always available. Thank you very much. So I think there isn't any question, Mr. Ravi. Am I right? Yes, sir. So, uh, now we I move forward, sir. Can I can I share my personal catalog of VRC if you allow? Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. Thanks to everybody for uh, attending my sessions and allowing me. And there is a LD questioning and answering. And thank you, Prakash ji and Sundar ji. So I'm just sharing professional catalog as a marketing. So request you to just go through and quick a quick review. So all I just started. All the best. I, uh, thank you, sir. So I have almost 17 years of experience in the industry. I, st I, I did the post graduation in microbiology in 2004 and joined the various type of companies as a microbiologist. I started my journey as a microbiologist from the formulations then after i shifted to the parentals and mineral water public testing laboratories i also worked in the educational institutions and since last six months i am exposing myself as a freelancer in medical device and helping medical device industry for the regulatory requirements of the india europe us and uk so i did the collaboration with the landmark research and a pharma service europe europe a Pharma Service Europe is the European uh, authorized and UK authorized companies. So I did the collaboration with these companies. And in some of the cases, I also seek uh, some guidance for the uh, C mark of the device where the some clinical requirements are that I used to take help from this A Pharma Service help. Uh, sorry to interrupt in between, sir. Mm. So actually, we are running out of time. So okay, no issues. I'm just having. I'm just. I will just spare the five five minutes. Okay, sir. So these are the overall services being provided from my end for India, US, EU, and UK and other countries. <coughs> As a microbiologist, and I have a good team and command on the microbiological requirements of the not only medical device and pharmaceuticals industry too. So these are the all the services of the microbiological requirements are being attended. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone. Thank you, sir. What are you bottle and all the problem? Thank you, sir, for the pre presentation and explaining the topic in simplifying way. Uh, our next session is on 3rd December 2022, shall be taken by Mr. Debashish Mahanta. He shall be covering expectations of employees and employ employers' needs alignments, sub points. Employees and employees' relationship, factors of change, hard evolution of relationship, what to align, how to align, whom to align, followed by question and answer. ICS is pleased to provide you all its research and development.
integrated management system, QMS, EMS, and OSHAs, excellence in education management, ISO, made easy in Gujarati, Marathi, Telugu, and Hindi. For reading any of the above books, please contact Ms. Shushma Khendalkar. Feedback form. Please register on www.sadgunsang.org and go in your login and give feedback. On behalf of Sad Sadgunsang team, I would like to express my gratitude to all esteemed delegates of the webinar for their presence and contribution to make the webinar a great success. Now we officially close the session. Thank you all.